There was a great rabbi. His name was the Baal Shem Michelstad. The Baal Shem Michelstad, he was a child prodigy when he was a kid. He was a brilliant boy. Very, very smart. And the king heard about this boy's brilliance, how smart he was. And he decided that he wants to test to see how smart this boy is. Now you can only think, you can only imagine how smart this kid is. I don't know who the smartest kid in your classroom is. But whoever that smart kid is, he's not as smart as this rabbi. He was so smart that the king decided he's going to test to see exactly how smart he is. And he decided he's going to play a game with him. He sent him an invitation in the letter. And in the invitation it said, and it read, it said, I want you to come to my palace. And I want to play a game with you. I'm going to play hide and seek. I'm going to hide inside the palace. And I want you to come and find me. But there's a lot of rooms in the palace, perhaps hundreds of rooms, and you only have about an hour to find me. Now, if you're going to go through every room in the palace, it's going to take you maybe even six hours, seven hours. And this boy has to find the king within one hour. And there's no telling him where he could possibly be. So the boy took up the challenge, and he came to the palace, and he sees this magnificent looking palace, beautiful, beautiful palace, hundreds of hundreds of windows. He doesn't know behind which window the king is hiding. And he looks around and all of a sudden he notices that one window was different from all the rest. He noticed that that shade by that window was closed while all the other shades were open. So he said it must be he's hiding behind those closed shades. He closed the shades so I don't find them in that, within that window. And then he made the calculation. He said, okay, this window is on the third floor and it's on that side of the hallway. It must be it's over there in that part of the building, part of the palace. He goes inside the palace, makes his way to the third floor, makes right, makes left, finds the room, knocks on the door. And sure enough, the king is there. So the king was just mind was just flabbergasted. He said, "How did you find me? How did you know I was here?" He says, "It was very simple. I looked around, and I saw that all the windows had their shades closed, so I opened. But this shades of yours, the one that you were the windows that you were hiding behind, those shades were closed. I figured you probably closed the shades because you didn't want me to find you." So the king says, "Wow, you must be really smart to figure that out." So he says, "But let me ask you a question." What if my shades would have been left open? Like the other shades. How would you have found me then? So the boy looks at the king and he says, I would have asked the guards. And I would have seen what they say. If they tell me that you're in that room, so that's the room I would have go to. And if they tell me you're in another room, then I'll go to the other room. Depends what they tell me. He says, yeah, but what if some guards tell me I'm in that room and some guards tell you, tell you I'm in the other room? How do you know where I am? So he says, then I'll go with the majority. I have to follow the Torah. The Torah says, he has a subject on this topic. Whenever you're not sure, you have to go with the majority. And if the majority of the guards tell me that you're in that room, that's the room I'll go to. And if the majority tell me that you're in a different room, that's the room I'll go to. So the king looked at him and he says, ah, if that's the case, that your Torah and your religion tells you that you have to go with the majority, then you have to convert to Christianity because the king was a Christian. And he says that if you want to go in majority and you want to follow the Torah, then you have to convert. Because the majority of the world is Christian. They're not Jewish. So convert. So the boy laughed. And he looked at the king. And he said, my dear king, even if a thousand guards would walk in here right now and tell me that you're somewhere else, I wouldn't believe them, even if it's majority. Majority is only when you have a question, when you have a doubt, when you're not sure what to do. You have a piece of meat, you don't know if it's kosher, you don't know if it's kosher, you don't know if it's not kosher. You, you go and ask, and if majority tells you it's kosher, you can assume it's kosher. And if majority tells you it's not kosher, then you can assume it's not kosher. But that's only when it comes to a doubt. But when you know 100% for sure, you don't have to ask majority. He says, I know 100% that Hashem is the real God, there is no other God. And therefore I'm never going to go to any other religion. And so even if you bring me a thousand guards, and they're all going to tell me that you're in a different room, I know you're right in front of me. I see you in front of me. No one's going to convince me that you're somewhere else. And that's the type of emunah that we have to have. That nothing in this world could convince me otherwise. There's only one God. We say it every single day. Shema Yisrael, Hashem, Lekeinu, Hashem, Echad. Hashem is the only God. There's no one else. There's no other power. There's no one else to turn to. He's the greatest of the great.